All right, what do we have behind door number one? Not this, but that. Get some lights on here. 1972, 73, 74, I'm not sure. AMC Gremlin. Here she is, been sitting a super long time, cobwebs just about everywhere. Kind of curious what we can do with it today. Howdy my friends and welcome to the channel today. I'm Luke, Thunderhead289 here on YouTube and today we have this old early 70s Gremlin. I'm not even sure of the year. I bought it a long time ago and then it sat in this barn where it's like a twice over barn find here. And I'll roll the clip here in a moment of where I found it. And uh, I didn't even really want to buy the car. Um, it wasn't even really for sale. I was buying some farm implements and it was sitting there and it was going to go to the crusher. and you know, as much as I don't really like Gremlins and think that they're a super bandwagon car, you know, I still, it's an old vintage car, and I know someone loves these, and I just couldn't see it get smashed. I mean, I'm sure you couldn't either. So with that, it sat forever. We're going to try and get it going today and just see what we have and what we don't have. So with that, let's jump right in. How'd you get back there? <laughs> the tire, the tire popping. I'll go, I'll go the dangerous side. I didn't want to get cut. Yeah. Oh, I like to party. Ow. I hit my head instead. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to worry about that very much. Yeah. Look at that. The Grimmy. Oh, bees, 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 bees. <laughs> Mine are freak out moment. Just had a bunch of bees land on my head. Yeah, let's let's not go that way in particular. All right. It's too cool. Who knows how long it's been here? AMC Gremlin. We have purchased it, and we are going to pull it out of here. And you are going to drive it to work. I mean, it fits you, right? A gremlin? You're kind of a little gremlin, so... Yeah. I know. It's in, it's in pretty good shape. Pretty good shape. What's weird is, like, the inside is like a time capsule. Like, someone had just drove it and just parked it a million years ago. So, probably no keys to it anymore. Oh, that's good. I didn't even think to ask about that. So anyway, with that, we're going to uh, try and get everything moved out of here so we can pull this thing out. Um, cause yeah, it's uh, buried and definitely sunk into the mud and everything that could be difficult about getting a car out is definitely present in this scenario. We'll do a little walk around here and as much as I don't like these it's hard not to appreciate this one it's got a really cool color to it it's not all that rusty for being a Midwestern car but it's been parked for a long time since the early 80s allegedly but 
they're a very strange car, you know, where the front of the car is like normal size car and then they kind of to the back of the thing. So super interesting. The interior, the doors open nice, which is amazing. The interior on the car is extremely clean for what it is. You know, at one point it had mice living in it. Um, just only natural. The logo, man, it just gets me. AMC always had the weirdest stuff where they just named things like, who would want to say they drive that car? The AMC Gremlin, the Rebel Machine, everything like that. But it is a six cylinder automatic car. So with that, let's get the hood open and see what we're dealing with. Man, that is like the best shutting door on an old car I've ever had. Truth be told, I have never opened the hood on this thing. So I don't even know if the engine was seized. I just bought it because it had a good body. There's a thousand bees in here and spiders and everything else. All right. I honestly have no idea what I'm working with. So, you know, but a carbureted pushrod engine is a carbureted pushrod engine. They're all the same methodology. So should be a standard off on this one. Pretty dusty in here. Definitely been sitting for a super long time. This could be over before we ever even start. Oh, there we go. A little something. Maybe. Let's go this way so I don't cut my hand on the fan. Ooh, I even heard compression. Come on, wiener arms. It's just a little AMC, right? Okay, that looks pretty good. We have moved the crank quite a ways. So I think, cause it was parked in a really humid environment. I'm gonna pull all the plugs, put a little oil down the cylinder. And we're just gonna see if we can get this engine uh, rotating over with a wrench on the crank. I feel a lot better doing that cause we're not gonna destroy the engine immediately that way. The plug wires were labeled at one point, but obviously I can't read that anymore, so. The obvious solution is just to waste a bunch of zip ties labeling the plug wires in sequence here because, you know, that makes sense. I don't even know why I'm doing this. They're so petrified they'd stay right in place. When doing the plug wires here, I noticed this hilarious decal from American Motors. Um, you know, have you ever met people that just brag about stuff that they're supposed to do? So during final assembly of this vehicle, the tire and wheel assemblies were precision balanced and the front end aligned, yada, yada. It's like saying, I take care of my kids. Well, you're supposed to. I can tell on this deal, I'm going to be getting a thousand spider bites. I got bit on the ankle by one of these bad boys once. And though they look small and we're in the Midwest where you Southern folk have things that are as big as your hand, they're still pretty potent. Like, look at all them spider sack things. So we're not dealing with that today. All right, much better. For everyone you see, there's a thousand you're not seeing, but you know, it makes me feel better at least. I definitely didn't need to number these. It's an oily son of a gun. Very preserved. Not a good sign. Oh, there we go. Oh, off to a good start, I see. That's too bad. A lot of corrosion on that one, so wouldn't be surprised if we're going to have some problems here. Boy, that thing's brittle. Oh, well, they all look pretty corroded, as one would expect. You count my blessings that the crank even moves. 
Oh, that sounded like I broke another one. Oh yeah, definitely. Oh, oh man. So I broke three spark plugs trying to get this thing disassembled and it's really weird. It's almost like there's no uh, connection other than the porcelain between the part where your plug wire goes on and the rest of the plug. You know, definitely indicative of some moisture in there, but not too bad. But I'm going to smash open this auto light plug and just show that, you know, this is definitely not the norm. I've never seen that before and that would be just a super brittle design by where your socket goes. Nope, actually I just broke it way down there, but granted we're hitting it with a hammer. Did that look as stupid as it felt? Because it felt pretty aggressive. But anyway, you can see that the part that the plug wire clips onto, you know, that's all one piece here. And so, you know, just normal wrenching on it with a socket isn't gonna snap that off like those. Never seen that before. And now I have another prime candidate for making a new piston stop. But enough about that, that's deep engine science, which we're not doing today. Hopefully, we'll see. All right, back to business here. I can always get a little distracted with science. So we're just gonna give these all these cylinders a little splash of lubricant. There we go. I generally use ATF here. Just makes me feel better. Nice and thin. Well, we're making a pretty solid mess. Again, I just feel better cranking over a dry engine that sat since three Vietnams ago. It's got a little bit of lubricant in it. Those cylinders are dead dry. And quite possibly corroded. All right. See with the spark plugs out, we can do this by hand. Very convenient. I'm amazed, even the alternator moves. That never happens. Stuff that's been sitting. Oh, tight spot, through it. Oh, now she's pretty loose. All right, I think we're in business. Before we get too buck wild spinning the engine over here with the starter, which seems pretty promising with the crank and everything, it's always a good idea to take the air filter off. There's a bunch of mice nests in here. We don't want to suck that right into the engine and ruin all of our chances of success. Oh, yeah. Yep, see, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Ton of junk in that thing. Yeah, exactly. All right. A little bit of patience with this stuff goes a long way. We got a bunch of junk in the carb. Carb looks clean. Moment of truth to see if the linkage is seized. And it isn't. That's super rare. That would have been highly annoying. So we're doing pretty good. I think she wants to run. What did I see on this? 258 so it's the McBeef inline six I think before we get too excited here if the fuel pump does work and there is a bunch of garbage in the tank we don't want to pump that up into the carb and I can do a lot of weird stuff with seizing valve train so before we get too buck wild let me just snap this off of here there we go now we're not gonna put anything in the carb <laughs> definitely petrified and Let's get the battery out and get our jump pack on. Look at this thing. Megatron. <laughs> oh boy. It's an Autobot. Oh no, it's locked in with a super rusty bolt. What do you know? Not getting bit by spiders today, but we're getting stung by bees. How'd that feel, little buddy? Get, go on, get. I feel bad, you know. You don't want to hurt the bees, but sometimes they sure like to hurt you. Trusty jump pack 1000 on here. There we 
go. That's fine. That definitely won't fall in the fan. So, so AMC's are like a weird monogamation of AMC, Ford, and Chrysler parts. So in this case, it has a Ford style um, starter solenoid. So we should be able to arc across the terminals and roll the engine over. I don't want to do it from the key because if our ignition is still good with our spark plugs out, you know, technically you can fry ignition components because um, the spark has nowhere to go. But I kind of want to see if the key works. Let's just bump it and see what happens. Mm -hmm. Don't know if I want to sit on that seat, but I guess we're doing it. Oh, oh hey, the key was on and some lights worked. Park, I think. I'll just, I didn't see that. Put that back on. Okay, let's give her a bump. Oh. Oh, there we go. All right. So the key works. That's good. We're not going to do that anymore for the sake of the ignition. And the lovely benefit of having a jump pack is we can just do this in a Ford style starter solenoid we can just hook to the starter side and roll it over like such and get hit with all the transmission fluid flying out that actually cranks and sounds like an engine the darn thing sounds really good, which kind of lends to the story that this car was just parked because they got a new car and that was really it. There wasn't necessarily a problem. The oil looks extremely clean, so normally I don't run it, at least for initial fire off, but in this case, I just might. Parts master. If you know where that oil filter came from, let me know. I'm not familiar. Um, I take all these precautionary steps because it's a real shame if you have something good to just go buck wild through the thing and ultimately destroy something that could have otherwise been fine. So, so I think at this point I do have every reason to believe that this car was just parked in the early 80s because, you know, it was just a budget cheap car, kind of like a Ford Focus, you know, of today. And, you know, when they got a new car, um, farmers, a lot of times they just keep stuff around, got pushed into a barn, and eventually it just kind of sits there long enough where it gets stuck, buried in, and it's never driven again. That does seem like the story with this one. Everything seems pretty good. So, all right, we got everything unscrewed here. Try not to knock too much dirt down in the thing. And it does indeed look like points and I really should have done this before I spun the engine over to be fair see if this is oh they're definitely you can see all that corrosion but they aren't seized so we ought to be able to get some sandpaper in here and clean this up very corroded actually but no surprise Iowa in the summer is like 95 to 100 degrees and 100 percent humidity so it does a number on stuff like this all right, everything cleaned up nice. You're just basically putting a piece of sandpaper between the point gap here and sanding that out. So that looks good. Mechanical advance still works. How about our vacuum advance? So if you suck on this tube here, it should pull the vacuum advance mechanism in. And you can see that that actually does work, which is extremely rare for a car that sat a long time which is really good. Shaft play, let's get this out of here. Has a little bit of play, but really not too much. Definitely enough that it's probably, let's look at the mileage. That's an easy way to determine. And that'll actually mess with, ouch, dinked my noggin right on the hood there. That'll actually mess with your dwell and your timing because that actually alters the point gap as it moves around. Another crux of points ignition. It always works, but it can be temperamental. 
so 25,000 miles or so. So it's probably more like 125,000 miles, if I had to guess, just from the shaft play on that distributor. It's up to interpretation at this point, but um, what I can tell from this thing is it looks like it has a good chance of running. So let's reassemble everything and then uh, throw some gas down the thing and just see what happens. I don't think we're going to cause too many issues. It seems like it's quite possibly a healthy engine in here. And I don't think we've done anything that's going to cause problems when we roll it over now. Forgot about our little spark plug problem here. Any parts stores close to me are closed and I'm kind of impatient. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set this guy right back on here. And for all three of these, I'm just going to tape them on because that'll be fine. Sad part is, is it would probably run forever like this. I took the rubber out of the spark plug wrench this time, and I'm just hoping we don't break any more. It'd be pretty hard to diagnose an intermittent spark issue, even though we'd probably know that the spark plugs are garbage. Not saying they'll even work as they are right now. But I'm just going to take the optimistic path. Electrical tape fixes everything. All right. Plug wires barely fit back on on our taped plugs, but they do. Kind of. Is that one on? <laughs> it's not even a taped one. There we go. Before we get too wild, I'm going to steal the fire extinguisher out of the F-250 here. Check out that wicked cool vintage massive snowblower. So, so far I've been 0 for 2 with the winter here in Iowa, living out in the boonies. So, hopefully with that thing, we do pretty good. This old F-250 has 190,000 original miles. It does a great job. It just drove a five hour round trip to get that bad boy. 394 speed. Thing's a tank. I'm gonna try and do this the rightest wrong way possible. So since we don't really have a fuel system at the moment, I'm going to fill the float bowl of the carb with a syringe. And give it a little spritz and see what she does. Don't ask me why I have syringes. Uh, my wife's a veterinarian. All right, we're just gonna find the bowl vent here. And in she goes. We'll do this like five times probably. All right, and a little spritz here for good luck down the throat of the carb. And now, We'll just see what happens. Normally I'll rebuild a carb, but these tiny one barrels, all of this was built for torque. And this carb is so small that it doesn't really need an accelerator pump to do its thing. And I could be mistaken, but I don't believe is this is a Carger carb. Not sure, but it does not have an accelerator pump, I don't think. So we might just be okay. Oh man. First impressions is that was this seat move? Not very far. So whoever drove these cars is really short. You gotta angle your legs just right. Granted, I'm six foot seven, so you'll have that. All right, keys on. This could be the moment here before I burn down my garage. Normally I pull stuff out, but you know, fire extinguisher, that'll be fine. Oh, and we have smoke coming from the engine bay already. Super, and a bad battery connection. All right, we're going back to the F-250 because it has a McBeef battery for turning over this massive 390 FE. And uh, if cranking amps are the problem, um, in a moment they sure won't be. There she is, 190,000 original miles. Never been out of there. Just keeps on going. You can tell I have my battery cables really tight, but it does the job. 
Oh, that's a heavy, heavy son of a gun. Sorry, buddy. All right, round two. It's highly plausible that the starter is pretty ratty on this thing. It was sitting down in the dirt pretty good. Uh, all right. Well, it cranked now. Hey, that's way better. What do you know? Okay. All right, let's put some gas down that thing. Probably evaporated everything that we had in it. She sure sounds really healthy cranking over, although normally I verify that it actually does indeed have spark, which I haven't at the moment. So I'm making a big assumption that all the mice haven't chewed up the wiring that are associated with the ignition. Um, but yeah, we're just going for it. Round two. Sure cranks good. Oh, our radio does work. I don't think we have any ignition. This is one of those reasons I always verify that kind of stuff because if I don't, it never works anyway. All right, so we're gonna test all this out here. We have the key on now, so if the electrical is good, which it probably isn't, the coil should be powered and all that you're doing with points or electronic ignition, the only thing that's going on here is basically the distributor you can think of as a camshaft position sensor, and it's going to spin around, and when the points are closed, it's charging up the coil. Now, what it does when the points are opened, it interrupts the ground, and it sends the spark along to the spark plug. I can get a lot more scientific about that, but, you know, just at a glance, that's what's going on. So what I've done here is I've unhooked a lead from the ignition coil, the main coil wire that usually goes into the cap. I've hooked a spark plug to it. And then, you know, I kind of questioned if I get a good ground around here, probably not. And so we're hooked to a wire, which is hooked to the ground of our battery. So if we're getting good spark, we should see every time those points open, that spark plug sparks. So if I can do this with two hands here, very precariously, again, the Ford starter solenoid, really handy in this case. So we're just going to touch our contact. And we aren't getting any spark. So let's get the multimeter out and see with our key on if we even have any voltage to the coil. I'm assuming we have something going on there, you know. So you kind of work linearly. This is kind of a crash course, but if you're not getting anything out of the coil, you know, the rest of the distributor, it really doesn't matter. So with the multimeter out here with key on, we're touching the positive side of the coil. The point gap is closed and we're on the ground of the battery. We're only seeing five volts. And we know that we have a good 12 volts to our battery. So yeah, the uh, wiring is probably chewed up under the dash there pretty good. All right, so now I have a auxiliary lead running to the battery at the moment. And I don't wanna leave this hooked on too long without the engine running because the coil is going to get really hot this way. But now I get a good probe here. We have 12 volts to the coil. Let me pull this out here. Now this is normally not what you want on a point system. Um, points are really robust, but they don't do great with a full 12 volts. Usually they have a resistive lead, kind of like the ignition I cobbled together on this tractor to get running. And yes, I have been mowing my property with it like this. I need to get the hood back on. But, uh, you know, usually there's something like this 
or that's a ballast resistor or a resistive lead like you have on Ford. So, you know, we could burn up the points, you know, after a little bit of run time, but at least it will fire off and run this way. So, all right, so clear prop. And you can see that spark plug down there sparking. Let me get, get you a better look in here. The camera doesn't pick it up super great, but now we can see the spark plug sparking. You can get a look at the points as we spin this around just for fun. You can see it's breaking that connection there. That point gap connection. Maybe you can't see it. Right there. So it's breaking that, interrupting the ground to the coil, and it's sparking. So that's what we want to see. Was about to make the classic blunder here with the cap back on and the rotor not on. That would have been non-functional. Everyone's done that at least once, right? Now really with this all hooked up like it is, I shouldn't need to turn the key to roll the engine over. We've effectively bypassed all that. So with my auxiliary wire hooked up, I should be able to arc across the starter and uh, you know, our ignition's hot, and if it's going to run, it'll run. I hate to be an optimist. That never goes well. Let's just see what happens. Okay, the moment I've all been waiting for. Oh, and naturally, there it goes. That's ridiculous. It's straight up idling. Can't make this up. It's the first time being an optimist has ever paid off. Oh boy, and I want to shut it off. I want to shut it off right now. Huh. I think I'm going to want to pull this thing out of the garage, maybe. That was probably like Hiroshima to the mice that were living in there. On a positive note, um, I cleared the wasps out pretty good. Won't be getting stung by any more bees in the near future. Definitely don't want to burn my garage down. Let's see what we can figure out. I don't think I'm going to push this thing out, seeing as how the tires are flat at the moment. Look at the sidewall rot on that thing. Hard to say if it'll even take air. You can see where it sat for a long time, right in this general jurisdiction. The air compressor is done, um, so i got to get a new one of those. I think in the meantime, I'm going to break out one of these bad boys. Never could bring myself to rip out any of these calendars. They're all dated 1949 to 1944. This is a tire inflator that you hook to the engine, and the cylinder of an engine fills a tire. So I think I'm going to hook it to the tractor. I would actually use the car, but considering it's doing the incinerator 1000 out the exhaust, eh, we probably want to get it out the door before we do that. So we'll fire this thing off and hook it up and see if we can get our one tire aired up and it'll be good to go. Now, if you didn't see the revival on this rig, because I know tractors aren't everyone's deal, the reason it looks so Mad Max ghetto is I bought it not running, and someone had put a 12-volt battery in it. I mean, it sat forever, and obviously the 6-volt coil had let out the coil cheese, and I thought, huh, there's no reason we can't rig something together with an automotive coil. Kind of drilled a hole here, and super ghetto 12-volt ignition system, but as you can see, it works pretty good, and... I really haven't been inclined to fix it because, you know, it's done so well. I've mowed my, my property just a ton of times with the thing, and it does great. Could probably stand to put the hood on, though. All right, so we're all hooked up here to the clown car's tire. We have a spark plug out of the tractor and our adapter fitting in here. And the idea is, is as the engine runs, there's a valve in here which is supposed to mitigate the cylinder from drawing fuel into that cylinder 
and then it seals when the piston's going up and it's supposed to, in this case, send the air to the tire. Jump up here. All of this tomfoolery, that's our ignition on. This hooks everything up. Because that's what you want. Roll it over. There we go. Not bad. And it is airing up the tire. Stand so close to that thing, it could explode at any moment. That's probably good enough. Oh, and you do have to get this off right away because there's nothing to stop the air from going out of the tire and back into the engine. Too cool, that is so fun to use. All right, my friends, that's gonna do it for me today. It kills me to not go farther on the thing because man, it runs really good seemingly aside from the whole exhaust fire thing going on that you know, we don't want to burn our 1940s shop down here. But, you know, I only really have the weekend to do this stuff. And I really need to go and mow the grass before the sun goes down. Um, coming home from work now, it's late enough in the year where it's dark when I get home. And, you know, pretty sure I saw a giraffe in the yard the other day. The grass is so long. So with that, thanks for coming along with me. Catch the next one here. We'll pull it out and just... Have some fun with the thing. It very well might be a runner. Um, seems pretty promising at the moment. If you have any suggestions for me, because I don't know anything about AMCs, anything I need to watch out for, you know, feel free to leave a comment below. You know, I'd like to not destroy the car because I hate to admit it, but it's it's kind of growing on me. It's pretty cool. It's a cool color. Um, I don't know. It's just kind of neat and fun and being so small like it is, you know, it's just different, I guess. So with that, my friends, I'll catch you for the next one. Thanks for coming along today, and I'll see you around.